Howdy friends, and welcome to another video that I filmed in quarantine. This time, it's that sick cape that was making the rounds on the internet, as the ladies of American Duchess have recently taken a pattern off the existing cape and uploaded it for free on their Patreon as a teaser for their paid content. Now the pattern itself is available for free, but you do have to either have it scaled up and printed for you by a copy shop or enlarge it manually like I did. As all my local coffee shops were closed due to the coronavirus and I didn't have any gridded wrapping paper on hand which would make this process a lot easier, I made myself some gridded paper using rulers and used inches since that's what the original pattern uses. And I counted everything out on the paper square for square. It worked okay. It's not a method that I would particularly recommend, but it did get the job done. After counting out about nine zillion little squares, I had a back piece, a sleeve piece, a fold over front bit which gets the darts, and two pieces for the collar. The original garment is from the 1910s and was made out of two layers of wool, one black and one tan. However, I enjoy making historical things out of wildly inappropriate fabrics, so instead I chose to make mine out of a cotton sateen that was black and a quilting cotton with an Asian-inspired print. However, this isn't a combination I would particularly recommend for this garment. The cotton sateen shows every wrinkle, so if you wear it in the car or anywhere where you're going to be crushed, you will end up with a very, very wrinkly garment. I'd suggest using something more like a flannel for the outer layer, or go for wool, like the original. The front, back, and neck pieces all easily fit on a standard 44 inch quilting cotton, so I didn't have any trouble with that. But I would recommend to not forget to mark your darts before you actually lift your pattern piece off, because it will be hell 
to get those lined up later. I used pencil for on um, the print, which is actually permanent, so you don't want to do that if you're making a garment for someone else, and used a chalk pencil for on um, the cotton sateen, which I didn't bother to actually film since it looked exactly like me cutting out the lining, but with so much less fun from the loud floral print. The large sleeve style patterns, on the other hand, are much wider and need to be cut on the full width of the 45 inch wide fabric. And despite my best efforts, I still somehow managed to not mirror one of these and had to recut it. If you're working with a 60 inch wide standard apparel fabric though, I don't anticipate it being a problem as I think you'd be able to cut just on the fold as you would with any other piece. Then it was time to actually sew. The collar for this is sewn with the right sides together, with the side that goes towards the neck left open, and the contrast piece is ironed to put the seam allowances down, and then is top stitched down as instructed on the American Duchess instructions. I only did this on the one side, but you could definitely do the contrasting bit on both sides and have a cape that is fully reversible. Visible top stitching is how this was actually originally attached. It's historically accurate. By this point, post Belle Epoch, visible machine top stitching is actually becoming a thing, especially during and post World War I. So extant garments from this period would imply that visible top stitching stopped being the entirely taboo Thing it would have been in the Victorian and Edwardian periods. With the collar done and waiting, it was time for the darts, and the darts on these are integral to having those crossover pieces on the front behave correctly. If you were to repattern this to not have to do those darts, this fabric wouldn't curve in the same way, and you'd have the fabric behave very differently. There are three darts 
on the front of varying depth but the same end point width to be sewn. Do these first. Do not sew them to the sleeves first. That's a mistake. I don't care how much you want to see the fun bat cape part all together. Do them while they are flat. Once the darts are sewn, they are all trimmed down to a half an inch of seam allowance on the inside and pressed nice and flat, which I did off camera. I also did it with pinking shears because I had them, so I figured I would, but this cape is lined so you don't actually need to. Now this cape goes together in an interesting manner. It's assembled front pieces to back pieces at the shoulder. Then you stitch down those seams, press, and then the large sleeve pieces that make up the majority of the actual cape part of this cape are attached to those two in a sort of pseudo arm sky. But instead of going all the way around, the front of the sleeve abruptly just stops and the back of the sleeve just keeps going for like two and a half more feet. This was not made any less baffling by my imperfect pattern copying that I got off by one entire inch and it made everything misalign with that pseudo arm sky and I ended up just accepting it.
with the sleeves attached, well, sleeves with quotation marks around them, it's time for the collar. The collar gets centered to the center back of the back panel, to the center of the collar and everything, all of it, the top stitch contrast piece, the front and the back get stitched down. Don't worry about leaving any openings in it, it doesn't need to be left open. sewn, the wrong sides of the outer layer are lined up, pinned, and sewn to the wrong sides of the lining layer with about four inches left open at the bottom to turn the whole thing inside out. This is called bag lining as it's often used for handbags and I figured it was too modern for 1910 but it appears that it is not. And once all of it is sewn together. You turn the whole thing inside out through the little opening after you clip the shoulder curves and trim the corners where the sleeve cape thing meets the front part.
final steps after you have it turned right side out are to slip stitch the opening that was left behind by hand, though I used whip stitches because I have no patience, and to install your closure methods. If you're larger than the 36 inch bust that this was originally drafted for, you can use grain ribbon to tie it shut, or if you're smaller you can use hooks and eyes. Make sure you don't use satin ribbons though. I attempted that and it just slips down and your knot comes out and nothing lays right. Zero out of ten. Would not recommend. Now, the pattern for this cape got pretty popular, especially the image of the original. You can check out the tag AB Cape Cult on Instagram to see other people's versions of this pattern. It is apparently the official one that American Duchess condones, and I'll also post a link to the original pattern by American Duchess that was posted to their Patreon in case you decide that you want to make one for yourself or that you want to support the ladies of American Duchess who do lots of great research into historical costuming. They have great resources for anybody who wants to know about old-timey dresses, especially the 18th century, and also sell reproduction shoes spanning all the way from the medieval period to the 1960s. I'm also linking my Discord server in the description box there if you decide you want to hang out with me. It has nothing to do with American Duchess. But we share food pictures and all sorts of art. Sometimes I ask for opinions on projects. Sometimes I'll pop in with some historical dress facts. Sometimes I just post memes. Like this video if you liked this video. Subscribe for more content that's at least tangentially related to this and hit the notification bell if you wish to actually be notified because apparently the subscription box does not actually do that. <laughs>